very quickly, this is just going to be a, a simple, quick demo on how to get in and to do your work. Uh, so basically, we've got a page with your instructions and opening and saving. I'm sorry, that's for opening and saving. Then general instructions, how it works, you can review that. And we're going to start with varietal choices. Now, up in the top, you'll see a cost study of uh, great prices. We're focusing on California, uh, but you are going to find this program will enable you to run any international pro uh, project, at this time only in U.S. dollars, but uh, later we will have different programs for, for if you're making an Australian wine or a wine in France in that local currency. Okay? There will sometimes be different uh, 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 resources available here. This is an article on cost studies of grape growing and winemaking. This is Wine Business Classified. I think it actually, one of these opens, if, you, if I click here and open it in a new window, uh, it's actually going to take me to a place where I can go in and I can find things for sale, barrels and grapes and all sorts of stuff, okay? Uh, on this one, it opens me to the crop report, so just be aware. And, um, uh, but you can cut and paste this in and go to the winebusiness.com classifieds and so on. I'm going to be doing uh, a class on each of these separate tabs so I don't want to get too lost in the details right now but you got all sorts of cool stuff available for you. Your first project's going to be a Chardonnay. I'm just going to race through this just to show you how the program works. I, enter, I put my cursor in, I enter 100. When I enter, enter, it dings and gives me a cost of grapes. I'm going to look at yield per acre. I'm going to make an adjustment. I'm going to come up with a multiplier of yield for the costs associated at lowering that. I'll look at an appellation. In this case, I'm going to make a north coast wine or a, a, a central coast uh, Chardonnay and plug that in there. I'm going to then go to my final grape cost, pick a few things like a grower's premium because I want them to target some sugars. And uh, maybe I'll do a little bit of cluster thinning and ask them to drop 10% of the fruit. And you will actually come up then with a, a, a reasonable pro uh, 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 price that you might pay for a ton of that fruit. Okay. And then here's issues again on the cost studies and whatever. Then what's going to happen, uh, later I'll introduce, don't get hung up on this, but you can actually not do any of what I just did and just put in a price per ton. That's going to be for your final project, but we'll talk about that later. Okay? Pre-fermentation. We're now going to uh, turn our cost of fruit into a cost of juice. And I'm going to say roughly you can get 65 cases out of a ton of fruit. There you go. I'm going to go in and ferment and do some treatments and uh, put that in. We're now for, that's sort of our pre-fermentation. Uh, since this is a white, I'm going to barrel ferment this in a five-year oak. So that's telling me I need to put $4 into there. We're going to do not a whole lot of things other than some uh, basic lab work and um, Let's see, what else are we doing here? Yeah, actually, that's it. We'll just get away from a quarter. Now, remember, you're going to be able to go back and change all of these things as well, okay? Uh, aging and cellaring the wine. We're going to put this in, uh, let's put it in French oak for uh, four months. Uh, I know nobody ever uses oak chips, but you'll find out why they do actually in a bit. And yeah, we're going to throw it in new French oak uh, for two months just to say we did. So PR and marketing can put that on their label. Uh, it's going to give us our totals down here. We're then going to go in um, and just cold stabilize. Not too much to be done there. Okay. Uh, packaging. Uh, you'll, you get to put in whatever the packaging cost is. We've got some guidelines here. I'm just going to say roughly, let's 
call it $12 a case. Label, this is a worksheet for you. There's nothing to add, but you'll need information for your final project. And then we go to case production and volume. I'm going to make 10,000 cases of my wine, but I'm going to do it inside of a 50,000 case project, okay? So that means I get to use the 50,000 factor, and that'll give me some economy of scale for what I'm doing. And it goes, I'm going fast with this. Again, we'll go back uh, slowly um, over time. Now we need to go in and put our sales and marketing budgets. I'm going to put a couple percent into here. Now this, because it's a 50,000 case project, this would be multiplied uh, by five because it's uh, only 10 out of 50,000. I'm going to create a national sales budget. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to do too much uh, export, but I'm just going to plug in some preliminary budgets here. And then these are going to create, at the end of this, we'll come back and adjust everything, our budget per case and the total budget. And this is our, our cost of goods, including cost of sales and marketing. Okay. We'll then go to the U.S. distribution worksheet. We're going to put in a 2% commission to cover states that require this. You're going to have to learn about that. We're going to have to mark up this product to our distributor. And we're going to uh, look at about a 16.66 margin, 20% markup. We're going to add in some freight insurance and tax. You'll need to go do a little research on that. If there's a local tax, either a percentage or a flat tax or rate, You'll need to know those things in different states and different. And so now we have a distributor landed cost of goods. When you start making your budgets for the uh, whole project, you're also going to have to understand what does a distributor mark up their products. Now we're going to do the same. You'll put in a country for your project. It could be China. It could be Canada. Uh, I don't know. It could be Peoria. No, that's not export. Uh, again, you'll probably have a much higher uh, brokerage fee. Uh, export uh, distributors tend to mark it up more. Freight and insurance and taxes is definitely going to be higher. Uh, you'll have sometimes exorbitant um, duties and fees and so on. You'll end up with a cost of goods, and your distributor is probably going to mark this up significantly more. Now remember as you go along you can go back and then change it. I made a mistake. This was a winery uh, markup to the importer. So this is actually your margin. All right, we're going to plug that in at the same 20 percent. We then go to the point of sale. A lot of people have no clue how much and why and how, but this gets really, really cool because first of all we're going to look at your consumer direct. Since you're producing this, we're going to add, there's a higher cost of business of doing this, but you get to uh, mark your wines up to a much, much higher level, okay? Uh, if you're selling direct to uh, restaurants or retailers in your state, if it's legal, then you're allowed to sell it directly without going through a distributor. And again, you can have um, a much higher margin. If you are then going through your distributor, here are your costs uh, for uh, U.S. and for the um, export. And if a retailer marks it up, 33% is usually standard. In export markets, they tend to be higher. Uh, restaurants tend to mark up 200%, which means it's three times their cost. And we'll put that in for both this and that. And there you go. And what we've got now is a bottle that is $14.16 on the shelf in the U.S. through the three-tier system. And on each page, if I go back to my varietal choices now, uh, I've got this information so that I can see it. Now, this is going to be uh, your net uh, profit here. So we're going to now go in and we're going to distribute these prices uh, okay, so we're on the profit loss tab, and we're going to put in that this is going to be 60% of our business, that export sales, we're not really going to 
You'll see why we're not going to try too much there. Uh, we'll put our direct-to-consumer sales as high as we possibly can, all right? And then we're going to do 10% direct uh, to licensee in that, all right? Now, just real quickly again, we're going to go through all of this in detail. Here's what we've got. If we do 60% of our business through the three-tier system, it's 23.5% of our profit. Export is going to be really, really low. Direct to consumer, though, look at this. Now you know why they're doing the wine clubs, putting so much emphasis on direct to consumer and why the distributors are fighting it so hard. And uh, so that's our personification. This is the critical thinking. From their point of view, I want you to understand what's going on globally in the wine business. Okay? All right. So uh, to go back over things real quickly, uh, it's going to be a great thing. This is confusing as heck. I apologize, but I wanted to run through it quickly so you could see how it works. And then we'll start going through more details. Welcome to the course. And I really, really look forward to our uh, five weeks together. And thank you very much. There will be a new installment coming soon, and we'll start to break this down into a less frantic and crazy uh, program. All right. Thank you very much and look forward to talking with you on the first call when we get there.